Hi everybody, welcome to idcreatures.com. My name is Carla and I'll be teaching you today how to make one of those um, water taps, the plastic ones, that are most common almost everywhere. You have uh, a water container. So, okay, what I'm doing here is I just drew a cylinder at the top and connected it to a cone at the bottom. Okay, and I'm drawing another cylinder on the left. Uh, and right now I'm drawing the the place where they intersect. So you never have a straight line when you connect a surface that is uh, curved with another surface that's curved. So you see how they intersect and they make one um, curved line there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm sketching some um, just sort of details there. Okay. Um, this video is a little bit faster than what I actually drew this. Um, the time it took me to draw this, um, just because I didn't want to make it too long or boring. The original sketch was, I think, 12 minutes, and this one is somewhere around 8, I think. So it's not that much faster, but, you know, I just decided to do that. So now I'm drawing the um, the little um, thing at the top that you press down and it turns on and off. So what I'm doing here is basically just drawing like a big box. Um, and I just tilted it so that it's, you know, it has an inclination there. Um, I'm gonna add some marker here at the end of the video, so if you can't really tell what's going on, don't worry too much about it. Once you see the final, the final sketch, then um, you'll see how all this, all the lines make sense, and you can come back and watch it again if you have a question or something. Um, I had to cut the video there because I was looking for my markers and I couldn't find them. So, uh, Right here I'm just making some big ellipses there because it's where the the plastic um, object here connects to another one. But at the end I didn't actually like that. It was just something way too big. Um, so I'm just using the same pen but adding more pressure to it because I... Um, I'm already doing sort of like the final lines. Okay. So it has a little bump there, the surface. And with the marker, I'm going to make sure you're able to notice that. Okay. So I'm bringing the, the markers now. These are um, AD markers. I think the brand is called Chart Pack. You can find them online or, you know, as long as. Um, as long as you're using bleed proof paper, it's fine. Because if not, then it sort of spreads and just you make a mess sometimes. Uh, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm shading this like any other cylinder. Okay, you have a darker area. So the light here is coming kind of from the right to the left. And I'm not adding too much contrast because when you sketch or when you color with those markers in gray, then. Um, if you have too much contrast, it kind of looks like it's chrome, chrome surface, and it looks like it has too many reflections. And this would be something more like plastic, so I don't want to have um, too much contrast. That's why I'm not adding um, really um, just dark surface, or a dark area, I mean, like black or something. So uh, just in case you're wondering, the markers are the cool gray scale. It's, I, I'm using 1, 3, and 5 for the sketch. And now you're going to notice how, um, how I'm filling in the top part of the sketch. Okay. Um, so that one's a number 1 gray marker. Cool gray. All right. Alright, so I'm not sure what else to tell you here. Um, well, what I'm doing now is I'm just adding, I added a little bit of a shadow from the top uh, part there. See, I'm adding shadows. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there, uh, I'm adding a shadow there for the little bump. And I'm doing the cylinder 
right now the horizontal cylinder. And it's the same way I did the cone, without a lot of contrast so it doesn't look like it's chrome, but just enough to get the shape. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of color on the top, and right there I leave a little a white area because there's um, the surface is round, so you would have a part of that that reflects um, the the environment, which is in this case white because the paper is white. I'm coming back with the pen and just um, darkening some of the some of the lines, but at the end I sort of I thought it needed uh, a bigger edge, so I took a Sharpie and just went over the lines, which I think I'm going to do next after this. Uh, let's see. The problem with this sketch is probably that, or th not the problem, but sometimes it's hard to sketch really big things. Um, and this is way too big, I think, for what you know the object is, but I thought it would be easier to explain or to draw something like this and be able to see it in the video. Okay. Notice how I'm not doing a straight line. I'm coming in where you see the details. Okay, that's important. All right. Um so all this is kind of a waste of time cuz I go after I go um, and do the same thing with the Sharpie at the end just because I didn't like the result there. But you never know, so you have to try um, different things before um, realizing what's right for the sketch. So I think for the scale of the sketch, the Sharpie was um, a good option here. But maybe if you're sketching something that's smaller, then, then it won't be a good option. So always um, figure out that before actually using the sharp because when you use it it's you can't go back <laughs> so see how it makes the the um, well the sketch just jump out of the page even more because you're adding a really really just thick and dark line okay so it looks very different when you add this and sometimes it makes it look kind of cartoonish so just you know figure out if you want that for your sketch or not and another thing is that sometimes when you make mistakes it's very easy to correct them with the sharp because you go back and just um, sort of hide all the lines that were um, wrong or that you overlaid or something so that's another good thing about coming back and doing a really dark um, line and over all the you know the um I can't think of that word in English I'm sorry all the outer lines I can't I don't know what that's called in English I'm sorry so anyway notice how I'm not filling in all the lines that are inside the sketch that's what I'm trying to tell you by filling in all the lines um in the outside okay so there I hope you like this tutorial and you subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next tutorial.